the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge arrived at Kew Gardens in London this afternoon for the Generation Earthshot event. Kate and William have shown at recent outings and while Harry and Meghan's new sustainable investing venture was met with enthusiasm from Sussex fans, they did not cement the project with a public appearance. The Cambridges were joined by Mayor of London Sadiq Khan, television presenter and explorer Steve Bakshall and double Olympic rowing champion Helen Glover. In a statement, William said, Education is such an important part of protecting our planet. We must inspire in the next generation the optimism confidence and enthusiasm to chase those solutions and to continue building a more sustainable future. We know that young children already identify the climate as one of their biggest worries, and Generation Earthshot aims to educate and encourage them that together we can find the answers. Children can be uniquely creative and I can't wait to see some of the ideas that are shared with us. Generation Earthshot aims to inform children's interest in the environment and encourage students and their teachers around the world to generate ideas to solve the world's greatest environmental challenges. Mr. Khan said, It's been great to work with the bright young leaders of our future today to develop ideas on how to address the climate and environmental crisis. I want London to be a zero-pollution city so that no child has to grow up in our city breathing toxic air and I'm determined that we continue to tackle the twin dangers of air pollution and the climate emergency so that we can deliver a future that's greener, fairer and more prosperous for everyone. Bakshal said about the Cambridges, they were fantastic. Encouraging the children to throw out every idea possible. It's the kind of attitude our leaders need if we are to have any chance of making an impact on our climate's problems. Kate looked typically stunning for the engagement in black wide leg trousers and a green coat. Williams Earthshot Prize is an ambitious awards project launched by the Duke to recognize ideas, innovations and solutions that combat climate change and help protect the environment. Winners in five categories will be named during an award ceremony on Sunday and each will receive £1 million to develop their projects. William and Kate will attend the star-studded ceremony hosted by Clara Ampho and Dermot O'Leary, at Alexandra Palace in North London. The awards come ahead of the UN Climate Change Conference COP26 being staged in Glasgow in a few weeks which the Queen, the Cambridges and the Prince of Wales and Duchess of Cornwall will attend. As future King of England, Prince William, in particular, has borne the brunt of the increased workload royal experts have said. This has meant more outings, being seen more in the public eye and preparing for future responsibilities for both the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Managing their young family and regularly attending events has become second nature to Kate and William. And the Queen has been particularly relying on both the Cambridges and Duke and Duchess of Cornwall in recent months. Andrew Loney previously told, We're in a period of what can be called a soft regency, in effect the Queen is standing back, not doing many roles. The roles that she is doing are being accompanied by Prince Charles, everyone is being prepared for Charles and Camilla. As a result, William and Kate, who seem to be very popular, are stepping into the position that Charles and Camilla had. Because they are, I would say almost more popular than Charles and Camilla, they've probably been given a higher role. The Queen will celebrate her Platinum Jubilee next year, marking a staggering 70 years on the throne. At 95 years old the monarch has continued her role with gusto, attending several events this month already. On Tuesday she attended a Westminster Abbey service marking the centenary of the Royal British Legion, and on Thursday she will attend the Welsh Parliament building in Cardiff Bay. The Queen will officially open the Sixth Senate along with Prince Charles and Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. While Prince William and Kate have been busy meeting with schoolchildren to discuss Generation Earthshot at Kew Gardens to encourage children to generate big, bold ideas to repair the planet. Kate and William often top the polls as the most popular royals, and royal experts say this is only the beginning. Speaking on ITV's Lorraine the Mirror's royal editor Russell Meyer said, Prince William will obviously be taking over one day, I think we've seen him really come to the fore in his new role of being a trusted lieutenant of the Queen and Charles as well. William's position at the forefront of the royal family has been highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic. Royal expert Katie Nichols said at the start of the pandemic, we're seeing William step up in that statesman role. It strikes me as interesting that the first member of the royal family to address the nation has been William. And his prominence may be a test for the future, with one royal expert saying Charles could potentially pass the throne to his son when the time comes. Princess Diana's former voice coach, Stuart Pierce told, he, Charles, may not take the throne, he may hand it to his young son. He doesn't want to do it, such a difficult task. Mr. Pierce explained William is part of the conversation and has been since his younger years. However, passing the throne directly to William could pose a challenge for Charles. University College London's Constitution Unit explains, under common law, Prince Charles will automatically become king the moment the Queen dies. Prince William could only become king if Prince Charles chose to abdicate. 
That would require legislation, as happened with the Declaration of Abdication Act 1936. The line of succession is regulated by Parliament, as in the Act of Succession 1700, and the Succession to the Crown Act 2013, it can be changed only by Parliament and cannot be unilaterally altered by the monarch of the day.